uplifted lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. And here's your host, Miss Kim.
of life, for there is no shadow of turning that causes us to So I'm excited about that on today, and I want to thank you and um, ask you uh, to continue to lift me up in your prayers for 20, uh, well, for 100%, right, to get back to my 100%. Had a little fall down uh, last week, couldn't be with you, unfortunately. I think I had a full-blown flu. It was, a uh, man... It was major, but I'm almost there now. I'm almost there, so I'm so grateful. This is your host, Loretta Petit, and you're listening to the Loretta Petit Show, Women Winning at Life from Ministry to Marketplace. Winning is an option. Winning is an option. Everybody doesn't want to win. Unfortunately, they're satisfied uh, with being uh, sick and tired 
of life. They just want to complain. You know, people that just want to complain. They don't ever do anything different. You say, you know what, you tried this? They say, yeah, huh? You say, you know, you could do this and that might help with that. Yeah, huh? But they don't ever make a move. So that's why I say winning is an option. But not only is it an option, it's possible, it's probable, amen, for you when you do some things to help yourself to win. And so when you take that step, I want you to know God is pushing you along the way as well. So hold on to your faith wherever you are in life and know that uh, you're going to be right where God wants you to be as you surrender your all to him and trust him every step of the way. Uh, Again, thank you for joining us on today. It was a thankful Thursday. And uh, I do want to give a shout out to my wonderful producer, Miss Kimmy Kim, uh, just a woman who loves God and doing great and marvelous things. And uh, to the full elation team, uh, making some positive things happen in the city of St. Louis this coming November. I'll talk more about that. And also to Mr. Jerry Royce, I thank you, sir, for making it all possible. To God be the glory. And he is up and at it, doing great and marvelous things consistently as well. So on that note, let us thank God. Father, we come to say thank you now for your goodness. Uh, Touch us, oh God, where we are. Oh God, allow your power to be felt in the name of Jesus. We pray and we praise you for this opportunity. In the name of Jesus, we say amen. Uh, So listen, on today, um, I want to talk about growing pains, growing pains. I want to talk about growing pains. We, uh, as um, just in our human nature, we don't want any pains. We want comfort. We want nothing but comfort. You know, tell the truth, shame the devil. We want nothing but comfort. If it's going to take some extra energy, sometimes we opt out. If it's going to mean I got to walk an extra mile or half a mile, I might choose, oh, I'll do that some other time. If it means I got to go stand in a long line to get something done, I might opt for another day. Um, nobody really wants to deal with being uncomfortable. We call that pain. Being uncomfortable. Uh, we want to be comfortable, and that's the way it is. But if we want to win um, in this life, there are some things we're going to have to do that may not be comfortable. It may not be comfortable for your physical body. It may not be comfortable for your mind. It may not be comfortable for your reputation. It may not be comfortable for the family time. But guess what? You're going to have to get uncomfortable if you want to go to that next step or that next level. I do want you to remember that faith is the vehicle that we're going to use to take us there, whatever there might be for you. Above all, the Bible says, take the shield of faith, Uh and that way we can quench um, all of the fiery darts of the devil and of those who follow the devil, unfortunately. Um, There are some who just follow the devil. Now, they don't follow the devil on purpose. Don't get me wrong. Some may. I don't know. But I had a gentleman just the other day that uh, was in my presence, and he said, I don't believe in God. So on that note, he was starting to now, um, you know, just sign on the dotted line to follow the devil because there are two great powers in the earth realm. And if you're not on the Lord's side, mm, that other power is going to catch you and you're going to get on his side just by default. Um, So I do want you to take the shield of faith, all right? Take the shield of faith when you're going through these growing pains. Um. We don't like the bad experiences. We want positive experiences. Life will offer us difficulties. The Lord said that many will be the afflictions of those who are righteous. And we're going to go through some things. We may be afflicted in our physical body. We may be afflicted in our minds, in our emotions, in our relationships. We may be afflicted in our pocketbooks. Oh, my God, that's a big one too, right? That's up there with health, man. Nobody wants to be broke, sleeping under the bridge, or broke robbing Peter to pay Paul. Nobody wants to be broke to the degree of not ever being able to buy themselves anything, only paying bills. Um, But God said that many of the afflictions of the righteous, okay, so just accept it. There are going to be some times when times are going to be real tight, tough. Uh, You're going to go through some, maybe some health challenges and what have you. 
But God said, but I will deliver them out of them all. So trust God for that. He is the, the deliverer, and he will deliver us from them all. But I want you to keep your eyes on some things in your life as you go through, because as I said, um, you're going to have some experiences, and they're not all going to be positive, right? Life's difficulties do not allow us to stay the same. It is through those difficult times that we grow, just like that caterpillar had to create that cocoon and had to fight his way out to become that strengthened butterfly, strengthened in his wings so he could fly. He had to go through some situations. He had to go through some tightness, you know, uh, and that's how God planned it. That's how God planned it. So you and I, we're going to have to be like that butterfly. We're going to have to squeeze our way out of some things. By faith, remember that vehicle, by faith, we're going to squeeze ourselves out, and God's going to be right there to catch us. Now, life's difficulties do not allow us to stay the same. They move us. Difficulties are going to move you. The question is, in which direction will we move, forward or backward? When we have, had, when we have bad experiences, do we become better or bitter? I would like to say we become both. Sometimes we become bitter before we become better. We are in a situation, and we start to ask God, why me? Uh, we start to say things like, well, you know, I'm the one who did everything right. I'm the one who had the heart to get it all together, to make, you know, one step in front of the other, to put precept on top of precept, while the others were, you know, ignoring the word and doing their own thing, not taking time out with you. So why me? And many times we say, why me? And we get over it and we move forward. But some people get stuck right there on the why me step. They get stuck on that and they start to have a pity party and feel sorry for themselves and they become bitter. But after they've done that and the Lord sends them some help and they pay attention to the help and they listen to the help and they hold the hands of the help, then they'll become better. But some people just deal with it, they go through it, and they go straight to um, becoming better after they come out of their squeeze. So will those experiences limit you or lead you to growth? Uh, there was a man named Warren G. Lester, and he said, success in life comes not from holding a good hand, but in playing a poor hand very well. When tough times come, my brothers and sisters, many people don't respond well. Some seem to have the motto that, I once saw on a bumper sticker which said, when the going gets tough, it's time to take a nap. What a shame. Learning the law of pain is essential for everyone who wants to grow. Most successful people will point to the hard times in their lives as key times, key points in their journey of development. So if you think for a quick moment, can you think of a key point in your learning or development? What caused you to transform, to change, to go in a better direction? Those are your key points on your journey. If you are dedicated to growth, you must become committed to managing your bad experiences well. Well, I go through some tough times, some squeezes, and I could easily just jump off the ship. I stay on the ship. I endure like a good soldier. I hang on in there. And um, I know God is working a purpose out of all of that. So I stay in the squeeze because I want to continue to grow in the things concerning my relationship with God. So when you look at the pains of life that causes us to get into this place called growth, I have a few I'd like to share with you on today. And you will find, just as I found, we all have what we call a pain file. We have a pain file where we have filed away those experiences that we've had that were not so comfortable, not so immediately gratifying. But later on, we found out it worked for our good. You have some failures. You have some successes. You have positive experiences, but you also have negative experiences. So I want you to grasp this. How about the pain of inexperience? We've had the pain of inexperience first when we see a man that we like or a woman that we like. And next thing you know, we're thinking love. Love is an inexperienced thought. We don't know that individual. So we're 
we're going to get ourselves all caught up in a tizzy and the person don't feel the way you feel, walk away, and now you're crushed. That is a, uh, an example of the pain of inexperience. But what about this? Uh, to expect instant success early in your career, but found that it's taking longer than you intended for it to take. That is the pain of inexperience. You are not mature enough to get to the level after level after level yet. You had to uh, earn your wings, so to speak. You had to go through a little something, something, as we say, in order for you to get that experience. So you're going to go through the pain of inexperience when you're traveling a new avenue, going down a different road, whether it's in the office or in a relationship. You might find you're not ready for this level. You're not ready for this kind of a situation. So be careful and not to get yourself into something that you're not ready for, not to get yourself into too deep of a water for you to swim. Uh, The pain of inexperience, we all have uh, experienced that pain. This is from my pain file. How about the pain of incompetence? Uh, You know, early in life you find that you try your hand at something and you're just awful at it. You say, oh, yeah, but I love to sing. But you don't sing very well to most people. Or you may say, oh, yeah, well, I love to uh, play my guitar. But your guitar always sounds off key or whatever. You, you, You know, you're not there yet. You're not ready. Um, it's a. It's called the pain of incompetence because nobody is hiring you to sing. Nobody is hiring you to play the guitar because they feel that you still have work to do. You can look at past episodes of American Idol. People came on with beautiful voices, but they didn't get through because they didn't know how to handle that instrument. They were incompetent for the kinds of things that the American Idol was going to open up to them. It will force you to reevaluate your gifts. Uh huh. It will force you to sharpen your iron, the pain of incompetence. What about the pain of disappointment? Oh, we know that one so well. We revisit that one over and over and over again. People will disappoint us, and we will disappoint ourselves, right? So there were these people that scheduled to adopt the son, but then... They were so excited, but then they lost the son. Like, you know, it just didn't go through. These people were devastated. And then six months later, they adopted. They they filled out the paperwork again, and they were able to adopt a son. So there are things that we attempt and try and go after, but they slip through our fingers. The pain of disappointment is so very real when we think the world of an individual Um, as our mentor, we look up to them and then suddenly something comes out in the news and you find that they're leading a double life and you're so crushed, you're disappointed by your mentor, this person that you held in such high esteem, the pain of disappointment. And then there's a thing called the pain of conflict. We all are going to go through that, that pain of conflict. Um, How about when you go from Um, one situation to another, such as you may find that you have your girlfriends or your guy friends and y'all all, all, you know, y'all buddies, y'all girls, you know, and then something happens to split that relationship, have go with one and have go with the other. And they say, you know, well, I like both of y'all, but, you know, I'm going over here with Susan, well, because they like Susan more. Or I'm going over here with Jared because they like Jared more the pain of conflict, and you're trying to figure out, well, how can we mend this thing? How can we work it out? But, like, you're ready to work it out, and the other party is not. Or you do have the conversation with the other party, but y'all can never come to an agreement, the agreement to disagree. You can never come to that. It's just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It's the pain of conflict. Um, It's going to make you dig deeper. Right, as a Christian and as a leader, uh, because as a leader, you never want to see division. Never, ever, ever do you want to see division. Then there's one called the pain of change. The pain of change. And it's about careers sometimes having to change. 
I remember when I worked for city government, I had gone as far as I could in my area. I couldn't go any higher. I was at the highest rank. So I'm like, well, I'm not going to sit here and live my life out at this rank. I need more. So I ended up having to leave city government in order to go after my more, the pain of change. And it was bittersweet because I was going after something more, but I was leaving behind all those beautiful relationships and, you know, the people I had come to become fond of and happy to spend my mornings and my afternoons with. So you have a pain of change. And sometimes that pain of change is going to be difficult but it will afford you it will afford you uh, new opportunities, the pain of change. And sometimes you may have to start all over again and that becomes kind of trying. That becomes difficult. How about the pain of bad health? You know, some people deal with heart attacks, cancer, diabetes, high blood pressure. All of these things can slow your row. They can slow you down, but you got to stop to take care of your vessel because without your vessel, none of this would ever, ever be possible. You're getting to your next level. The pain of bad health. You may have to change some things, the way you exercise. You may have to change the way you eat. You know, you may have to change your number of waking hours. You may have to rest more, sleep more. Get it together, the pain of bad health. Then there's a thing called the pain of hard decisions. The pain of hard decisions. I know we all want people to like us. Yeah, we are, you know, made like that. We want people to approve of us. We want them to say, yeah, you look good or you smell good or you did that well. We want those commendations. We want everyone to be happy. Um, with us at some point, but sometimes those very people who give you those compliments are the ones that you have to go and correct and you have to say, no, let me say this to you. You're not handling that right or you're not doing this the right way. So you, you're you going to have some pain in those decisions because it's those people that support you sometimes you got to go back and share with and let them know that, you know, right into here, some things have to change. That's the pain of hard decisions. We're going to go through that in life. We're going to go through, I'm going to breeze through these, the pain of financial loss. Yeah, sometimes we find that our bottom line changes. We were in a great, great place, and suddenly somebody pulled the rug from up under us, and we no longer make what we used to make. The pain of financial loss. There's a pain of relationship losses. Sometimes it's with your family members. Sometimes it's with your friends. Sometimes it could be with coworkers. Um You're going to lose something. The pain of relationship losses, it's a real deal. You must strive to reach your potential. And then you have the pain of not being number one. Oh, my God, I know that so well. Uh, In my church, I am the second assistant. So that means that I'm not number one. I'm not on the top of the totem pole. But that's okay because you learn how to function where you are. But sometimes in your job, you want to be that number one go-to person. You want to be the person next in line for a promotion. And sometimes you seem like you never can get uh, to that number two spot. And when you get there, you can't seem to get out of that number two spot to become number one. There's a pain of traveling. You know, sometimes you have a job that keeps you going and you're missing your family. You're missing your friends, all the cookouts, all the baseball games and your little ones because you have to travel the pain of traveling. How about this one, the pain of responsibility? You don't want to take responsibility for your action. Not you, but I'm saying in general, you know, some people don't want to take on the pain of responsibility. But in all of our lives, there's going to be a whole host of responsibility, and it's going to be something that you are going to have to carry. Maybe the oldest child. You may be a single parent. Um, I'm not sure what it is. But you may have two or three jobs, but you're going to have to shoulder that responsibility. But in doing any and all of these things and coming up to the challenge of all of these areas of pain, you are allowing yourself to grow.
you are allowing yourself to become bigger and better. Amen. So know that in this life, some rain must fall. In this life, you will have pain, distress. You will have affliction. But through it all, riding on the wings of faith, you will be all right. You will soar. You will win. This is the Loretta Petit Show, Women Winning at Life from Ministry to Marketplace. Please reach out to me with your questions or comments. Send them to LorettaReviews at gmail.com. And the final thing I want to say, excitement is in the air. Elation Honor is on the table. It's ready to break forth November 15th and November 16th in the beautiful city of St. Louis, Missouri, where you will have my producer as the presenter, none other than Miss Kimmy Kim. You will enjoy Apostle Walker. You will have a good financial advice and guidance from Charles McCutcheon. Uh, you will hear uh, from a comedian. There's going to be a, a concert. It's going to be great. I'm pressing my way to be there as well so you can hear from me and I can just touch your hand. I'll be happy to meet you. But listen, press your way. If you cannot be there, you can uh, uh, definitely uh, make a donation. Uh, you can go to elationhonors.com. Uh, you can go to, I think it's on Eventbrite. You can find me on Facebook. You can inbox me. Let me know your intentions, and I'll put you in touch with the right connections. So, my friends, November 15, 16, 2019, in the city of St. Louis, Missouri, it is the annual Elation Honors Weekend. It's going to be all the way live. So keep that excitement, and if you can't physically be there, send your money to be a blessing because we need it to do what we want to do for that community and for all the people that are worthy of the honor. God says give honor where honor is due. So hats off to Kimmy Kim and the team. Job well done, and it's going to be greater later. So let's keep on pressing, and let's keep the faith. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Join me here next week, same time, 5 o'clock Central Daylight Time. Until then, may God bless you, and may God keep you. This is my prayer. Bye-bye. Your 
Yeah. 